Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay. And today we're going to take a look at the Soviet Republic, the Soviet Workers Party game and resources. I still think it's a terrible name for a game that's absolutely brilliant. We previously started this in December. Do check out the playlist if you're so interested. But for those uh, who would prefer to skip through that, I'll give you a quick catch up here today. Uh, we do have got very specific objectives that we need to achieve. Um, so let's go ahead and load it up here. Our save game coming over here on the Games with Brains channel. Uh, I'm in the latter stages of setting up a little Discord server with the simple obligation or intention of when I'm about to go live, I'll put out a message and for anyone that's subscribed to the Discord, they'll receive like a, a, a ping and it'll have whichever game it is that I'm going to play. And if those people, it may be or may or not be you, are interested in that specific game and you feel like joining in in some multiplayer way, then, you know, there'll be like a 10, 15 minute window, whatever, to join if that is so desired. But that's enough of that for now. We'll go more into details on another day once that's set up. But I just wanted to keep you there aware of the situation. So let's bring ourselves in here onto the Soviet uh, Republic. And there we go. Bringing the game sounds in there, music sound away. And yeah, so for those... Uh, we're clearly we're at night here in, in, in the middle of a snowstorm. Um, but yeah, so just to bring everybody up to speed real quick. This here was the single town that we built. Uh, it was auto named. Looks like Torrelstock. And in this town we've got a railway station and a few buildings which includes a shopping centre, some water. We've got a restaurant as well as a bus station. We've got a police station, a fire station. If we come a little further out of town down here, we've got our sewage uh, discharge pipes, uh, which we were starting to build underground. We've got a technical services station here, which is going to have snow plows, which we can see here uh, running through the uh, terrible weather here, the snow here at night, as well as delivering uh, water to where it's needed, getting rid of sewage from where it's needed. Um, and if we continue over to the railway line on the far side, we've got a coal pit here mine where we send workers down uh evening hardly streams there lovely winter uh, hardy streams coming in to say hello he was uh, very entertained by this game last time and uh, i think he was on about buying it so you'll have to let us know if you did are uh, you uh you slipped <laughs> on the way to the office was not worth it hurted a bit i bet it did uh, I have to continue with the uh, intro here. So we got the coal mine here and this is uh, taking our coal ore into storage. Uh, we're refining the coal here in the uh, coal ore processing plant. This is going to leave us refined coal. This is going to be stored here. That of course feeding into the coal power station um, as well as we've got a little pickup point here uh, where trucks can drive into and grab some refined coal. For now we're using that refined coal primarily um, to export, we've got this little road here that trails on over to one of our so Soviet borders here. Um, and that, at the moment, is our only very limited port, port part of the income. Oh, you didn't buy it. Um, tomorrow you're going to buy the Steam cards. Yeah, this, by the way, I think has been the first time I've ever streamed a game and somebody is tuned in to watch it and then said, Oh, do you know, that game actually looks good. I want to buy it. And uh, yeah, so hardly streams there. Uh, the people behind Soviet uh, games owe me, uh, <laughs> owe me a commission. Um, but it's a fantastic game though, so you know, I, I don't mind that at all. And then so today's objective, uh, we've got quite a simple uh, three-step objective really. So the first one is uh, to finish setting up our second town, because of course for now we've only got one. And in the second town, we're going to have railway station here in the, in, in the center of it. It will contain a medical school. And we, the reason we need a medical school, um, we can see here if we click on the station, we've got a bunch of students waiting to go somewhere. Uh, they have university students. The same applies here at the at the um, bus station. So we'll perhaps bus those, of, those in. And the reason, of course, we require a medical school 
Although we do start with a very limited number of doctors, those doctors are going to start dwindling as time goes by. So it's imperative we get a medical school to start straining, to start, well, yeah, straining, to start training the students up uh, to provide the doctors for tomorrow. In addition to that, we've got a massive trade deficit. We start with 10 million rubles. You can see we're down to less than five. Um, so we need to do something about that trade deficit. And to do that, we're going to take a look at how to import some resources. In this case, we're going to import just corn from the border. And when we bring that corn in, we're going to bring it to a factory and we're going to turn that corn, we're going to ferment it, turn it into vodka, into alcohol. And then that alcohol... A is going to serve our own um, pubs individually, so uh, internally rather. So here you can see we've got a pub, and so we'll be using the alcohol that we've made ourselves to supply the pub rather than importing the alcohol. And then B, the excess amount of alcohol that we don't use, uh, we'll export it over the border again. And that, in addition with the bits of coal that are being exported with a little bit of luck, should start and dealing with the financial deficit and then step three is simply any other bits as and when they crop up. And so with that little intro out the way, uh, let's start tackling them in order. You can see here, 30th December 1970, it's currently minus 15 degrees centigrade uh, outside, which is very, very cold. And certainly without the heating systems in place, everybody here would begin and die and, and die quickly. And without people... You've got no workers, and without workers, you may as well quit and start again because <laughs> it's going to be the, the end of the game. Let the importing of good old Soviet Caucasian materials begin. Glory to the Soviet Union. Not missing it, neither, though. <laughs> yeah. All right then, so let's make a start. So we got our secondary town here. We can see there is a road plan here. It's not yet finished. Now we do have workers on the case, but it's gonna be quicker for us uh, to finish that. Now, our construction industries, if we take a look, we've got, if I recall, three construction uh, facilities. Here's one of them. If we take a look at the assigned buildings, we designed everything on, you know, I think everything basically the last episode, episode number two, except for mechanical and electronic components. Now, again, these are things that we can build later on, but that's quite a way down the tech tree, if you want to call it that. And so the only way really for mechanical and electronic components, as with anything else at this stage of the game, is to import them. Um, ourselves and the same goes here you know clearly the whoops the construction industry everything and so the way we're going to do that is set that up first then at least anything we've forgotten uh, to deal with ourselves our construction uh, team will deal with uh, in the background um, so let's have a little look um, I'm thinking as as always when you've got construction industries you don't want where they have to go to pick up resources too far away. Uh, so I'm thinking somewhere around here is uh, is a good distance. Uh, so let's go with here. Got the road cargo station. And this is simply so we can have more than one lorry coming in at once. Because we're going to have some lorries importing from the border. And some lorries from the construction stations uh, going there. So it's it could potentially be quite busy. And yeah, so I think here's a good spot. I'm going to change this over to the plan mode. Just so A, we're not paying to level terrain. And B, if it doesn't fit, we don't waste money. So that's the first part. And, you know, the different types of materials get stored in different places on this game. So, for example, the open storage, you know, would store things like bricks and steel, as you might expect. But the warehouse... A, you know, building with a roof is going to store things that you wouldn't want to get wet, such as your electronics. And so we're going to place that one down. Again, you can see the little yellow brick roads. We want those to connect. But here we see the, the road there is on the wrong side. So again, to fix that, I'm going to press T uh, to, to mirror the building. And now we've got the road at the opposite side of where it was before. And that's going to allow us to connect up the yellow brick road. And this is simply, again, so we can get more than one lorry in at once. Uh, it's perfectly legitimate just to place down 
a warehouse, then, but then you can only have one uh, lorry in at once. Yeah, it would seem... Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. So we're too high. If we zoom ways in on the camera there, you can see there's a bit of a height discrepancy between the depot and where the uh, lorry station is going to be. And so the easiest way to deal with that for me is to click on the terrain tools. You've got a few options here. I'm going to click uh, the level terrain from center. Select that. Move the mouse wheel so that the uh, area that it's going to work on is big. And then the center is, you know, the height we want to be. Well, we want it to be at the height of this depot, so I'm going to hold it down. Right, you can see the uh, workers there getting to work. And then I'm going to slowly drag it to the le drag the mouse to the left until I've kind of got the area that I want. I might even roll the mouse wheel in now. Of course, the smaller the area that you ask them to work on, the quicker it's going to go. Let's see if that will fill in now. Uh, so once again, select the warehouse T to flip it around, and there we go. That's going to that should hopefully work. You can see there need flat terrain. Hold LMB to flatten. LMB is a left mouse button. We'll hold it down just a little bit there at the end, and now it's all green. So let's OK that. And then all that remains to do is connect this bit of road here in case there's a fire. And so here we see there is a little bit of a problem uh, with the terrain going the other way. And again, sometimes you can, like that, just get away with trying these little short bursts. And if you're lucky, eventually it'll fit. And there we go. So I'm going to click here to OK that. I'm just going to save. Okie doke, just in case uh, we get now on those little crashes um, which sometimes happens when you're dealing with road networks like this and again just to make this instantaneous so we can get it up and running I'm going to build the warehouse I'm going to build this little connection I'm going to build the road cargo station I'm going to build this road and I'm going to let my construction workers uh, place that when they're ready now we have a notification over here there's a heating problem so let's take a look at that why have we got a heating problem? Well, it's a fire station, but if we take a look, the fire station is a ways away from the town. If you recall, we do have a heating plant, but that's to supply the town if we've seen that before. In fact, if we come in here to the F3, which is the underground menu, we can see the plant here. We've got an extension over here for the heating plant. Again, it's Soviet Republic, at least in the game. The people don't heat their own building. You heat the buildings on their behalf. And again, if we come over to the overlays and show building properties, if we come over to the hot water tank, here we can see, okay, we've got nice, lovely hot water throughout the entire town, but coming uh, over here, here's the fire station, we can see it's at zero degrees. And so it, basically it's frozen. The only way to deal with that is either to put a shed load of extensions for the heating all the way over here or to put a little heating plant down here. And it seems a bit of a waste, but the problem is we're going to continue to get that message if we don't. So I think what I'm going to do reluctantly is place a small heating plant down over here. Making sure that that little red line, which is the line for the heat, connects up with the fire station. I'm going to place it here, and if we know we've got the coal in here, here we've got a conveyor distribution, and so that is going to connect everything up there and the bus stop here for the workers anyway. So that should... Um, I'm not going to force build it. They can build it, and hopefully by next year this problem will go away. I'll delete the message for now. An electricity problem so again we don't seem to have very reliable deliveries of workers to this coal station and again we, we I'm sure we've got three buses working that lane uh, that line now and so the only real way to deal with that is once again put some more residential units down so we've got even more workers in this town um, let's go for this one here. Let's no, let's pick something different. Let's go for this flats made out of bricks. Can we fit those in there? Not ever so slightly. Not 
ever so slightly too big. Let's try this one. That's surely going to fit. They do need a little bit of space. Ever so slightly too big as well. Okay, let's go for this one then. And that is going to fit. Let's go there. And I'm going to plan the footpath round here straight to the police station there. Uh, this bit of footpath will plan there and we'll connect that to the side of the building. Quick question, how long does letting something build normally take? Well, you're going to find out in a minute, hardly, but it, it, it depends entirely on how many construction vehicles you have and how... The sort of distance between where they are, the resources and the workers, but you'll see. And if you want to let it build by itself, you need to make sure that you've got everything available. But thankfully, you don't got to memorize it all. So, for example, that you just need to... Yeah, so this is a good point, right? So we're, we're trying to build some stuff here. We click on here, one of our construction offices... And if we click on this, sources of resources and workers. If there's something missing, we're going to know about it at the top here in red. So, for example, the source for electronic components is not assigned. The asphalt plant can't produce asphalt. Those are the two problems. That isn't to say that we've assigned everything. Clearly, we've not even assigned the electric. Why is it not complaining about electric components? Or in this case, sorry, is complaining about electric it's not complaining about mechanical components. Well, why not? It's because it's not gotten to try to build anything yet that requires mechanical components. So, for example, if the construction office is only laying down a regular piece of tarmac for a piece of road, it's not going to need mechanical components to do that. It's going to need, you know, some quarried stone. It's going to need, you know, gravel, asphalt, perhaps some concrete. Uh, if you've got street lamps, maybe some steel and electrical components. Um, you know, so not everything. You know, it's not going to need wood either to put down a road. So just uh, swings and roundabouts. But essentially, to make sure that it works, make sure these red problems go away. And so let's deal with them one by one. So the source for electronical components is not assigned. Well, we built our warehouse here where we're going to store the electrical components. We built uh, the road cargo station. This is where the lorry is going to go. And so let's uh, select our uh, construction office here and let's tell it your mechanical components are going to come from here and your electrical components are also going to come from here. So that's it done. So why is there still a problem? It says the source is without components so we've told it where to get it from so it's happy with that but now it's saying all right i know that the resources come from here and if you're ever sure where it unsure just click on it and then it's going to say it here and if you're unsure for example well where's this just click on your eye symbol here and as as we see there we know okay so it goes from here this is going to get the electronics or the mechanics from this building. So this connects up to this building, and in here we can see, but well, it can store everything, including electronics and mechanics. Now we need to import these, but we, I don't want there to be crops here, chemicals, but nor do I want, if you're importing two or more resources to one building like we're going to do, there is a risk that we're going to end up with all of one or all the other. So let's say we just want mechanical and electronic components, which is what we want here. Let's say it loads 50-50, but then when they're building, they only use, let's say for today's construction, electronic components. Well... At some point, we're going to end up with all the electronics components emptying out and all the mechanical components filling up. So to make sure that we keep an even balance, we've got this limit amount checkbox. And so I'm going to enable this. And by default, it's going to give a little bit of everything. But we're only interested in electric and mechanical. So I'm simply going to just change to zero everything that we don't want. You can see everything that we do want is gradually increasing until we just have electric mechanic. I don't want plastic and nor do I want electronics. There is a difference, of course, between electronics and electrical components. Of course, your electronics is like your TVs, 
and radios and so on. So we don't want those either, nor plastics. And now you see it's 50-50 just with these two. And because we've limited it, that's going to ensure that we don't get too much of one, which would result in the warehouse filling up and with a full warehouse, not enough of the other because we've got too much of the one. So again, that's uh, going to ensure that. Okay, so we've said allow up to 100 and odd tons of this and up to 160 odd tons of that. Where do we get that from? Well, again, it's just same as before we set up a line importing and again the best way to do it is to use a distribution office because that way they're not going to import resources that we don't need where you've got lorries continuously moving around that aren't required it's only going to bring them in if needed we could also connect it up to the rail office but for high value imports like this certainly in the early stage uh, we're going to use trucks and so let's do that And to move these around, <laughs> Ad, Addy's dreams there uh, is uh, is is talking a lot while I'm trying to do this, and it's, <laughs> it's kind of weird because I'm used to playing just playing and you know describing tutorials. That was a leap, but then playing and describing tutorials and talking with people who join in in live stream, my head's kind of bamboozled. Um, so so do forgive me hardly if I do miss anything. But uh, back to this. So I'm going to use the distribution office. And again, for the for the trucks, this is going to enable you not just to have a lorry. You can set a lorry to just continuously bring resources all day. It's just going to go back, forward, back, forward, back, forward. But like we said, if the building is already full and you've still got this lorry going back and forth, back and forth, it's basically wasting fuel and it's clogging up the road. And as your city gets bigger road congestion really does become a problem at this stage in the game it may not seem like it but it really does start to become a problem and so to eliminate that again you can have a distribution office and that basically lets you say if this building is less than x amount full then do that in other words if this building has got less than 20 percent electronics then send a lorry to the border to bring electronics and then that way, if the building's more than 20%, it's just not going to do anything. Uh, or any other example that you can think of. And to do that, you need these distribution offices. You've got a choice between small and medium. And I prefer the medium offices for two main reasons. One, you get to have more lorries. And two, you get to have more connection points. If you've just got a very small, isolated thing somewhere out the way that just needs two or three lorries, uh, you know, by all means, build a small one. But for anything else... You know, you can build a larger office. Again, these guys are going to be uh, trundling off to the end of the map there. Um, so there's no benefit to me building this office close to this uh, depot because the, the lorries, when they come out, are going to have to come down this road over to the edge of the map over here to trade with the neighbouring country to buy whatever it is that we need. And so it would make sense... You know, in, the, in this case, for me to build the uh, trade center. I'm just, the, the only reason I'm not moving it over here is because I haven't got any electric over. Do you know what? Let's build a little windmill and then we will. So I'm going to just click flatten the terrain. And as soon as it says it's ready, I'm going to build that there using rubles. Okay, 37,000. I'm then going to come over to the electric menu. And if we look over here, we do have a couple of wind farms, including a small wind farm here. It's going to cost, look at the price there, almost 7,000 rubles to buy. This will generate just enough electricity uh, to provide power to this building. It probably won't generate much, if anything, more than that. So don't try and connect it up with anything else. There just won't be enough but for this out the way building by itself, I think it will be. So I'm going to drop it down there. And there we see, we've got the distribution office here. So to make it build, bring um, the electronic components as well as the mechanical components here, we first need to buy a lorry in the correct type of lorry. So clearly it's not going to be a cement lorry. That's no good. Nor is it going to be a dumper, nor is it going to be a tree logger. However, if we come over down here to the covered hull, and if we hover the mouse over, you can see exactly what type of goods it can carry. The covered trailer can carry crops, it can carry food, livestock, chemicals, and so on. 
And if we look further towards the right there, we can see that includes mechanical as well as electronics. So I'm going to buy... In fact, let's scroll over to page 2. And the reason I'm doing that is this one. If we look at the speed, is 88 kilometers an hour. This one here is 80. So it moves slightly faster. You can also filter out by type here. So if we click covered hull, it's going to get rid of everything that doesn't apply. So I'm going to buy a couple of these. And with the office selected, um, by the way, if you select another building, I'll just show this now. Do I think I could design or manage an actual Soviet city? I don't think so. I imagine it's very complicated. And I imagine there's a lot of people that will try and come after you and kill you if, if you don't give them bribes and backhanders. But uh, we'll leave that one there. There was a lot of corruption in those days. Um, probably still is light, but... Uh, yeah, so take for example now, we've got this construction office, which we've said is this new building that we've built here. We've got the power there, we've got the two lorries we've bought. If I go and select another building, so for example, this one here, notice the menu disappears for it, because I've selected this building here, so this menu now applies to this building. However, there's a little trick you can do. If you select it here, you've got here a little pin. And that now we get this little red pin there in the right corner. Now, basically, this doesn't automatically go away. That is going to stay there until we click X. Now, why would you want to pin it? Well, we know we want our lorries to go here when they deliver in or bring in the goods. And so now we can select our distribution office. And with the cargo station, and with them both pinned, these menus are not going to disappear. So this just allows us to quickly move. Now, if we forget, well, where's this lorry going? Hang on. Well, we just click on the I on the cargo station, and it just brings us to that place. Well, where are they coming from? Well, it's the I from the distribution office. And of course, we can rename these by hitting the R key. So, for example, we could rename this distribution office to Electronics and uh, mechanic, mechanical uh, import. And that might, you know, if it, if it, to remind you what it's for. And, you, you know, you can do the same over here. Um, for the road cargo there, let's just be quick. Elec and mech for construction. There we go. Simple as that. Okay, so how do we tell these lorries to bring the electronics and the mechanics here but well, we need to assign it a task as simple as that that's this blue button here we just click it once where from it's basically asking all right we need to we need to assign at least two buildings one where stuff comes from one where stuff goes to well it comes from the border so let's come over here and make again this won't work if you don't have a road connection we've already built a road connection earlier on so we click once on the border here, and that's now connected. Now, it says unload, so we'll have to deal with that in a minute. Let's just come over to the other building. Now, let's just assume, well, we've forgotten where it was. Well, let's click on the eye here. Oh, yeah, this is where it needs to go, so we'll click on the plus again. And now we've got both those building in. You see there, we've got two of 20. We've got the border and the drop-off point. But everything's backwards here, you see... Default here says unload at the border. Well, that's the opposite. We need to load at the border. What do we need to load? Well, it's the mechanics and the electronics. So I'm just going to unselect everything. I'm going to select load. Here we see electronics. Here we see the mechanic. And with those two selected, now the uh, cargo state, the, sorry, the distribution station, which is this here now knows what it wants these lorries to do. Why are they not setting off immediately? It's because it doesn't know. It knows, okay, you want me to load them, but where am I taking it once I've loaded it? And every line needs a start and a finish, or it won't run. You know, you can't just have a line with one station, basically, which sounds obvious, right? You need at least two. And so we're going to tell it, well, you got to come over here. This is where we're going to store them. We need to unload them. And what do you want to unload here? Well, these are the same, right? The electronics and the mechanics. Up to what point 
Well, 30%. That seems okay. So what that means is if this is over 30% full, it's not going to send any more trucks out. Why would you not want it at 100%? Well, if we're importing goods and they're quite expensive, it makes sense not to spend a huge amount of money on filling it up as full as we can, but rather keeping it at a lower level where we're just sort of a little bit more than what we're using. And so that should work. So if we come back over to the distribution office, and if I unpause, now it's got a route in. In theory, these guys should set off. And there they go. And in my experience, what it does is it will send one lorry for one item and one lorry for the other item. So even though one item isn't necessarily 30% complete, it will balance it out all the way until it's 30%. So it's not going to do all of one and then all of the other until it's 30. It will it'll do a little bit and a little bit, uh, which is really, really helpful. And so with that done, clearly if we come back to the construction offices, they're still going to complain, hey... Uh, in this, Okay, so we, we assign this one. So let's select this one. He's still saying the source is without electrical components. Why? Well, the lorry hasn't got it yet. It's as simple as that. As soon as that lorry gets to the border, it's going to pick up his electronic... In fact, let's watch it. We'll speed up the time. Is this... A, no, this is the dumper exporting coal. Where are we? Here we go. So we got one, one's going to get mechanic and one electronic. So let's pick up the pace. Now, these guys are driving slow, and again, it's because the road is covered in snow, and we've not had a snow plow down here yet. Uh, you can see the snow plows working over here. They, they sort of clearly start near their base, and they spread out, and eventually they will, they will cover. Now, if we select this lorry, if we zoom in, we can see here on his job, his job is to go to the custom house, and we can see based on this little icon to pick up the electronics. Once you once you played the game for a bit, you'll realise the mechanical ones looks more like a grey cog. Uh, the, the electronics, it's like a, a little blue and red capacitor on like a piece of green circuit board. As soon as he gets there, this will load up. Of course, we've got to pay for it because we're buying it from abroad. Although we do have a few lorries, again, selling coal. Of course, coal, in this case, is worth 235 rubles for a full lorry full is worth much less than a lorry full of electronics. If we keep an eye on the price here of what's the value of what's in the back of that lorry as it pulls in, there we can see it, 5,085 rubles worth of electronics. And so that is worth about 20 times as much as uh, one of these lorries full of coal. So that gives you a little idea on the uh, value you know the different values of goods you can actually find out the value of goods if you come over uh, onto one of these menus um economy and trade you can find out here what you import in how much you're spending on different goods um for example importing here and so in the last you know this month we've so far spent 26,000 rubles importing steel and uh, you know clearly a huge amount on a trade deficit that is unsustainable. Now, as soon as that electronics lorry gets here, this construction yard is going to stop complaining about the lack of electronics and is going to send a lorry out this covered hole. Again, it's not going to send a bulldozer to go fetch electronics or a cement mixer. It will only send a covered hole. If it doesn't have a lorry that's suitable, clearly that's going to be another problem. Well, we've got a covered hole right there. Sometimes it's saying that the asphalt plant can't produce and then that error message goes away. The only reason that happens is because when a bus comes in and drops off the workers, there's going to be workers there. But at the end of the day, they go home. And until the next bus comes in, there's going to be a period of time where there's no workers potentially working at the asphalt plant. So that's why that message comes and goes. We didn't assign this one. It this is perhaps one of my little bit fiddly sometimes on this game. Even though we have two construction offices very close to each other, we need to assign them both separately. So this one 
was the one that we assigned. You can see everything there is assigned, mechanical and electronics. This one here we haven't yet. So to do that, we'll come over here and we'll tell it mechanic. We'll click this button here to assign. And again, it's going to be here. You can assign it there, but bearing in mind only one lorry can fit on this road. And you like to keep that free for fire stations. This uh, cargo station here, if you look carefully, one, two, three, four can fit four lorries in and the rest can be queuing up. So this is a much more efficient way. So again, mechanical and electronic. And that's that one aside. And then last but not least, there was one more over here. Where is he? There he is. And we'll tell this guy same thing again. Mechanic and electronic. My voice sounds really nice. Well, that's very nice, Harley. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. It's uh, It might have something to do uh, with... Sometimes I squeal and shout into the mic, and sometimes I talk normally, and that helps. So let's have a little look. Where is the... Yeah, so here's the guy with the electronics... So if we view the camera on him, I'll tell you what, let's just pause it real quick just to prove the point. So this guy's wanting the electronics and this uh, construction plant is complaining that there are no electronics. And so in theory, as soon as this guy drops off the electronics in here, this message should disappear. So let's play it normal speed. In he goes and he pulls into position. And now the message there goes away. We see the lorry unloads. And if we now click on the warehouse, what do you know? We've got three and a bit tons of electronics. We've got five tons of mechanical components. We can see it's 30%, uh, sorry, 3% full. And so because of that, this construction office says, well, if it's less than 30%, go get some more. And so that's what's going to happen now. And so those two lorries are going to go back and forth until this warehouse says it's at least 30% full. And then when our construction lorries come here to pick something up, it's going to get less than 30% full because, of course, they're using it. And so the uh, delivery office here is going to say, hey, it's less than 30% full. Go send another lorry to get some more stuff. Providing we've got money, that will happen and uh, happen quite well. All right. With that very detailed, done it to death, but hopefully there won't be anybody watching at any time that uh, that didn't grasp that because it's one of the concepts in this game that is a little tricky maybe to get your head around first, but as soon as you've got your head around it, it makes sense and everything in the game that deals with moving moving resources around works to the, the same rules, you know, whether it's by road, by rail, by air, by boats it's the same principle where from where to and by how much what are the rules is it but have at least this much there or you need at least this much there again it depends like here for the with the coal supply this is the excess coal that we're exporting and on this one the rule is if you are at least 20 percent full then we're going to export it. In other words, if I run out, start running low on coal, i.e. it's less than 20% full, the distribution office is no longer going to try and load up and export the coal. Why? Because I need it for myself first. I need the coal to run my power plant. I need the coal to run my uh, heating and all the rest of it. If that's all good and above board, now you can export the excess. You can see, even though we've got 12 trucks here working for us out of 12, we're not able to export the amount of coal that we're generating. In other words, we're basically... The coal, if it could, would overflow, but because it can't overflow, we've got workers here that are not able to basically work because, well, there's nowhere to put it. And so this here, if you like, is... We're losing basically money on this coal. Um, so there are other ways uh, to deal with it. Um, the best way to move a large amount of resources around is using the rail network unless you're near the water. 
The problem with boats is they're very, very expensive. So that's something that comes on later. But with boats, you can use, you, you can move even more, as, as you might imagine, than uh, with trains. Of course, the, the lorries are the, are the smallest way of moving stuff around. Coal plant. Yeah, yeah. The, I do. Oh, we do. We do have atomic plants in the game, but it's uh, it comes much later on. It's one of the more advanced technologies. Uh, if we take a look here, advanced industry. Here's our nuclear industry, uh, right from the uranium to the refinement and uh, eventually coal power. Uh, sorry, nuclear. And so let's focus on the second town. Um, and again, just to speed things up, I'm going to force the train platform as well as the two roads on the extreme to build. Again, when you press that to build, it in-game talk, it brings workers in from abroad and it pays them, the workers and for the resources from abroad. That's how the, you know, the game gets around you uh, thing. And you can see here, we're running out of money all the time. So we're going to have to come up with uh, some way to start breaking even uh, or deal with the trade deficit uh, very quickly. But for now, let's get the medical school in because otherwise we're going to run out of doctors and that's kind of critical. So coming over here onto the state infrastructure, we're along there we have medical universities. So I'm going to click on one of those. And again, on plan mode, first of all, the third option here. Oh, it actually, it doesn't say plan mode. It says build from resources, but it is, it is the plan mode. And I think I'm going to plonk it there. And again, we're paying for that digger. Uh, oh, I say we're paying. That's our own digger that we've paid for rather than paying for somebody abroad to dig up a bit of dirt that... We've seen works much quicker, but costs a lot of money. Whereas for us, it's free, providing we've initially uh, paid for the digger. And so I'm planning for the university to go there. And uh, roads... Yeah, I like to build bridges over the railway. And the only reason, really, is that, you know, bridges and trains can go over and under each other at the same time. If we build a, a level crossing like this, not that we can't, Clearly it's one or the other, and especially in a town where you've got lots of trains, if there's a fire, you can have a fire engine trying to get through, you can have queues for trains, and buildings just, uh, you know, they don't end up to go very well. So it's definitely worth... Um, I'm thinking something like this. And I'm going to pop out a little piece of road. Where are we? Hang on, let's go over here. Something like that I think will work nicely. And then again, I really like this curved piece of road. Uh, you can also build trams on that. Uh, we'll look at that a bit later on. Let's not complicate things too much. And then again, the Q and E keys on the keyboard to raise and lower. Again, you can't go too steep, so we need to add on a little bit of distance. There we go, it goes green. And then I'm just going to curl it down on the other side. Using the mouse wheel again to change the uh, curvature, you know, how curved it is on the on the bridge there, I think. There we go. Actually, let's connect that all the way up to there. And then... There. Work with that. Anything... Anything else, both is bad, but something like green energy isn't really an option in the game. Yeah, there is a, there is a little bit of green energy, Hardy. It's, the problem is, here we've got solar and here we've got wind. You'd need to build so many of them, and obviously the solar doesn't work during the night. And, you know, the best bet is the atomic. And as far as I'm aware, there is no meltdown. At least it's not happened to me. You've got coal and you've got gas. You've got your solar and wind. And a, a, a small and a big nuclear plant. I find typically when I've played before, I need two, maybe three coal power plants. And then that gets me big enough to the point where I've got enough money and resources to start working on my nuclear industry. 
And as soon as I've got my nuclear industry, it produces so much energy that you can basically sell it. Um, I mean, we've got we're producing enough excess energy that we can sell now, um, simply because we've got one coal plant, but in a very small um, republic at, at this stage. We'll have a look at doing that in a sec, but for now, I just want to finish getting these roads. Uh, so. Rather than plan these and hit this, I'm going to switch over to rubles and then press this button to buy. And again, that's just... I need this up and running a bit quicker. It would take our construction guys a long time to build that. But the speed at which they produce does increase. It's just, as you can see, they've got a lot of existing projects on the go. And with the amount of snow on the road, I'm thinking it's worthwhile actually putting down a second technical uh, office here, maintenance office. And that is going to deal with um, more of the snow at this end of the map on the roads. You see, we've got large areas here that are just too far away. I'm thinking here, again, is another good spot. Again, I'm going to use my own people to flatten the uh, the soil just there and then once that's done I'm going to pay for it with I could even pay for the building in dollars let's just do that to mix it up the only thing again at this stage of the game I really use dollars for is the bus because the west you need you need dollars to buy uh, vehicles from the west and you don't have many but the ones that you have are sometimes better but you can use dollars to buy for buildings, so it's not like it's entirely worthless either. Let's speed up the time just while this building completes. There we go. We've got the working range. Now, if we zoom out, by the way, I should have perhaps mentioned this. And if we hover over working range, you can see there the yellow on the road highlighting how far a uh, thousand meters is. So if we push that out to 2000 meters, we can see what difference that makes versus a thousand. And... To me, the 2,000, it almost reaches uh, the border. If we push it out to 3,000, well, now clearly it does reach the border. And coming over here, but it reaches almost everywhere that we've built a road, ne road network so far. And again, to buy snowplows, we'll just come in here to buy a new vehicle. Click on snowplow. And again, different ones have advantages and disadvantages. But this one here, which unfortunately is the most expensive, is also the best. If you take a look at, this, at the plowing speed, it's 43 kilometers an hour. It's at the bottom there versus this one's 21. This one's just 19. This one's 28, so a bit better. This one's 23. And so 43 is a big advantage. So I'm going to buy a couple of those. And now we can see them already going out. And with a bit of luck, one will go one way, one will go the other. And as he goes along, that's going to clear the road. And again, the main advantage after that is that the, the lorries or the trucks are going to drive faster. We actually got a snow plow here. This guy is from all the way uh, over this office here because we've only got the two offices. So, yeah. Okie doke, so how are we doing with the medical school? Well, it was just asked uh, to be planned. It's not started building, so I'm going to pay that. Now, look at that. It's going to cost me 220,000 rubles, which is going to take a huge chunk away from what's left, but it's got to be done. And we've got a little bit of road here leading up to the university that wasn't complete. I'm also going to pay for that. That's another 2,000 and odd rubles. And this is our medical university. And... I I just want to show this to sort of prove the point that starts hopefully to give everybody an idea of, of, of how this game works. And again, we've paid in rubles for this to be built. And so the story is that workers are coming in from abroad from our Soviet neighbours, bringing everything that they need in um, to build it. And we're basically paying them directly, which is... And here, if you take a look at our bank balance, it's uh, tipping out accordingly. And again, we can be notified when the building is complete. And then that way, you know, if we'd asked our own guys to build it, you know, it can take half an hour, let's say, in the game. And you're going to not necessarily be thinking about it in half an hour. 
And then you're going to get the notification here. Construction finished. Okay, let's take a look. Well, there it is. All right, let's slow time down. I really wanted to drill this bit home. So here's the university. Now we're going to have a number of problems with it. Why? Well, again, you click on it here in red. No power. Well, why no power? Well, see, the power supply is over here. We've yet to build a substation over here. So that's one. No drinking water. So we're going to have to put that down as well. Temperature is too low. Okay, no heating. Needs professors and staff. Well, why are there no staff? Why are there no professors? Well, like everything in this game, you need to bring them in, either by train or by bus. Now, there are cars that you can buy and give to people. The problem is they're too expensive to buy and give to everyone. So the, the, the way that the game rations it out is just like in real life. It's the rich people the elites that get the cars and, and you know you may you may define a medical professor as an elite versus say somebody that works down the coal pit and that's exactly how it will be so if we buy cars and put a car park here in the town next to all these buildings and then we were to put another car park over here it's almost a guarantee that you're going to start and get uh, people driving the car from town over to this car park without us even doing anything else. Again, I feel like I'm covering an awful lot here, but it's just to give you a, a flavor on how deep this game is. Um, but for now, let's see if we can address these red issues one by one. So let's work from the top down. So the, the, the building here is without power. Well, we come down to the power menu. We're going to click on the, uh, the substation. And again, if we hover the mouse, we can see there in yellow exactly how far the substation is going to cover. Clearly, the rail station needs power as well. And we are intending on putting some more buildings in the surroundings. Um, so a central, I think, is quite a good spot. And again, I'm going to pay for it up front just to get it nice, uh, get it in a little quicker. So let's drop it down there. So at this point, we could just build power wire, power wires and just click, drag and bring them all the way over to our existing um, transformer station here. And don't forget the transformer is what converts the power from these high power pylons that come from the power plant into the uh, lower power that, uh, you know, runs into the city on the substations. And again, you've got your overground wires here, as well as your underground wires. Clearly, it takes longer to dig up holes and build wires underground, although it does look better. And of course, it lets you build over the top. But for now, let's just uh, go with the overhead wires. And I'm going to drag it from here. I'm not going to pay for it. I'm going to use this one here again, just to plan it, even if then I am fully intending on paying for it. It's uh... Again, better to plan stuff for free and check it all works out before you risk buying something and then realizing, oh shit, it doesn't fit. Alright, here we got the medium voltage switch. And again, this allows you to convert, you know, like a, like a plug at home. It allows you to put one plug socket into the wall and convert it into two. Well, same here with the wires. And so let's put one of those here. And I'm going to pay for that up front. Let's select our wires, let's plan it, and, you know, selecting from where these yellow bits are. And again, these yellow bits go away if you select something else. So, for example, if I'm working on the road and select a piece of road, you don't see the yellow thing. Why? Because the road's nothing to do with where the power connections are. So to bring them back, we come back to the power wire and then they reappear. And that, and that goes for every... L, you know, footpaths, it goes for water pipe connections, it, you know, everything works like that. Otherwise, your screen would just be a mess. So here we got these power wires here that we're trying to connect. A little tricky to see because it's so snowy, but I can just about make it out. I'm going to continue running it around the side of this lake. And let's run it here across the road. And... Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now again, I could click this here and you can see start construction of planned infrastructure. This would tell our guys, hey, go build these wires. Um, to give you a little idea on how long it takes, let's go for it. So let's tell our guys to, to begin. And if we zoom right in, 
I'll just turn that down a sec. We can see here the wires here in yellow. So let's select, uh, you know, it's in the plan if you like to be built. And if we uh, select it, here we can see what the situation is. Uh, so let's let's take a little look. So it's unfin unfinished medium voltage wires uh, 173. Every time you build something else, you know, you're going to get the number getting bigger. Here we can see it's going to take 64 work days to complete. It's going to cost uh, 3.2 tons of steel and 0 0.038 tons of electrical components. Here we can see which construction officers have been assigned to the job. Well, we've got three in total and it happens that all three officers have been given this job. And if we scroll down further, here we see, OK, who's on who's been assigned vehicle wise? Well, if we click plus, we can see currently there are two vehicles that are already on the way. Um, so if we can select the first one and uh, we'll click on the eye to see exactly where he is. We see here this guy is carrying a whole bunch of electrical components. We see here 0 0.41 tons. And so he's bringing that in. We see here the value of the goods. Uh, what's that? About 608 rubles. And so he's bringing them in. And if we look here, we've also got a second guy. Let's select him and we'll bring the camera on to him. He's currently not carrying anything. If we look in the back, it's empty. But we can see here his job is to go and pick up steel. Remember, the wires need steel and electrical components as well as workers. Before it brings the workers, it brings the resources that they need to build. Doesn't make any sense to bring workers when they've not got any steel or anything to work with. And so we'll see how that goes. So again, we've got the two lorries. And let's have a little look. Where's this guy got to go? And now we can see it's back end of February. The snow has melted away. And so that's going to be it for another year. Well. I'm going to guess he's going to get the steel. Here's the uh, steel depot. Again, if we zoom in, here's the steel. Here we've got prefab panels. These white ones. And here we've got bricks. And here's the pickup depot. And so if we select him, there he is. And we can see him in there starting to load up the steel. Same if we look on here. He's now got two tons, two and a half, three tons, 3.3 tons. And so it's not full nine tons. Why? Well, if we have a look here, he doesn't need nine tons. He needs 3.2 tons. So three, two, three, three, same thing. And he's now going to bring him over to where it's needed and uh, yeah so we'll pick up the pace just to get it there quicker and again it needs a road connection to, obviously to bring it from where it came to where it needs to go if there's no road connection it won't build them and so and if there isn't a road connection well you've got to build the road first and then build you know the wires second and so here we see it's it in this case he's dropping the steel off at the uh at the, at the uh, power transformer place there. And so I'm just going to do away with that truck now. I think we're done. This truck here, the covered hull, we see has already disappeared. He's dropped his stuff off. And so now, what's the problem? Well, we're waiting for workers. We've got everything else. And if we take a look here, we've now got a couple more buildings. Well, what's the first one? Let's have a look. Well, it's a crane. Well, that's going to be helpful in putting power wires up. And what's the second one? Mars 305. Well, I happen to know from memory that's the bus. And you can see here, his job is to go to the bus station and get in 53% or about half full of workers. So if we click on that guy, there we see the bus. And again, if there's not enough workers in the station, he'll just get what he can. Let's have a look. How well is he going to do? So he's starting to load up. I only got two. Well, why only two when clearly there are more people there? Because those are going to be passengers and students. Well, two workers when he was supposed to be half full is clearly not enough. So what's going to happen? Well, the answer is when he's dropped them off, he'll be sent back to try and get some more. Okay, let's pick up the pace. And this is how every construction 
works when it comes to vehicles again we've got helicopters and stuff that can build that will come later so here we see the crane moving in and starting to set up the wires here comes the bus and once it's dropped these people off this should i say drop the people off and then he carries on going Oh, there must have been a little... Oh, I see why. There's a little piece of incomplete road there that was needing workers as well. Now this is going quicker. Why is it going so fast now? Aside from me fast forwarding it. And that's because this bus has just dropped off some workers. And because of those workers, it's making this entire process go quicker. Again, the workers with the vehicles together make everything go quicker. And that wire is now complete. It's gone from one end to the other. It's over. The construction is complete. That wire, as we see now, is now conducting voltage. Job is complete. Clear, of course, we still need to get a wire from here over to here. But rather than uh, get that whole construction process done again, we're going to build it ourselves. And I'm going to build it underground so it doesn't get in the way of any future buildings. I'm going to press F3. You don't have to be on the underground view to build underground, but it's just easier because you can see where your wires are easier when you're in this view. So There we go. I'm going to pay for that with dollars. And if we click this now, oh well, we can see it rather just by the street lights and the power. So the building is now supplied with power. Okay, but still no staff, still no professors, because again, we're not bringing them in. At least we got power. What's the next problem? Temperature is too low. Well, same as before, we need a heating plant. Then we need to deliver it coal. Let's just put a small heating plant. And again, those are red little wiggly things are where the hot pipes come out of. And you, you really want the hot pipes facing towards the place that you want to heat up. Especially if it's quite a large area where you're going to need more. So I'm going to place the plant, the heating plant here. Paint it for it with dollars. And when it's done, if it doesn't naturally reach the university. Again, we've got the heat exchanger uh as we used here, we've got the heating plant. Here's the heat exchanger. And these two together, if we look at the range on the heating plant, it reaches that far. And if we look at the heat exchanger, it reaches this far. So any buildings not covered from here are certainly met by this one. So let's have a look. And there we see it is covered. If we see it, hover it over, it's definitely covered. So that's fine. All right, well, that's now in range, but uh, still problem with the heat, clearly. Well, why? Well, because we've got no coal and no workers working at the heating plant. Now, we could set up another aggregate storage and in it store coal, a small one, and then just have the coal feed the heating plant. And that would work. And we've done exactly that um, here. Here's a little coal storage. It's got a conveyor belt that tips right into the heating plant. But if we take a look actually at the heating plant, we can see it's capable of storing about 45 tons of coal in its own right. Take a look at the aggregate storage, 870 tons. Some may argue that is a little excessive. And so rather than building another one of these, I'm gonna set up a very specific line. Now we've got our uh, road depot here. We know to move coal, we need a dumper truck. Yeah, we certainly don't need a combine harvester or an oil tanker or a roller or a bulldozer. We need a dumper truck. And so I'm going to buy just this one again because it's a reasonable price. It carries a large amount at a reasonable speed. Just the one. And I'm going to double click it here to select it. I'm going to move this or pin it. I'm going to get rid of that because it's in the way. And I'm going to give him two jobs. And the first job is to go here. And I'm going to tell him. Load coal.
By the way, I'm using the right mouse, clicking and dragging the right mouse button to move the camera, the middle mouse button to change the view like that. Coming over here to the second coal plant, and I'm going to, you know, with the dumper here still selected, and I'm going to click again. And we can see now he's going to unload. Well, I'm going to tell him what? Unload coal. And importantly here, I'm going to check this box. Wait until unloaded. And so what this guy's going to do when we set him off. Hopefully this is starting to make sense. He's going to go to the first stop, which is if you forget, double click, click on the eye here. What's he going to do? Well, he's going to load up coal. Where's he going to get it from? Well, in here. These little boxes are where the lorries park. You can see it's capable of holding up to two lorries. What's he going to do? Once he's loaded up, well, he's going to go to the only other stop he's got. Where's that? Stop number two. Where is that? Well, double click, click on the eye. There it is. What's he going to do when he gets there? Well, he's going to unload the coal. When's he going to leave? Well, we forced him to wait until the coal's unloaded. Why does that matter? Well, let's assume the heating plant is full and the lorry is half full of coal. Is the lorry going to turn around and get more? No. Why is he not going to get more? Because we've told him, wait until you are unloaded. Again, preventing unnecessary traffic on the road. Let's tell him to go. How? Click the start button. Okie doke. Now we need to connect this uh, heating building up. We've got a road here. Let's go there. And there. Uh, it's still not going to work. Why? Because even with the coal, we've got no workers. Also missing drinking water. And that's probably going to be here, although it looks like we have already had a delivery. Yeah, so look at this. The university we see here with the water, it has, you know, it's got a load of water. Where did it get it from? Well, the only place it got it from is this technical office with his water delivery trucks. We haven't put any water connected up here. But this building is in range of this, uh, again, the technical office here. Again, it's in charge of water, sewage and clearing the snow. That's it. Those three jobs. And it if we hover the mouse on the range, we can see the yellow road there. It's clearly in range of the medical university. All right, let's try and uh, get this. Uh, connected. I, I just need a 20 second uh, interval and I will be right back in 20 seconds. All right, thanks for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, and we could put these uh, water buildings down, for example. Coming over here, we've got the water substation. If we position this carefully, take a look, we'll be able to supply both the university and the heating and, of course, any future buildings. And uh, we will require... Now, to me, it looks like we're going to need this road extending off over here. So rather than build something that blocks it in, I'm going to put the road out first. Maybe to there. And then we'll connect this. Now that doesn't look like the nicest curve in the road. And if you've watched this for a little bit, you'll remember me saying mouse wheel to change the curve. So in this case, that looks much better. So let's go like that. And at this point, we can start putting our water in. So I'm going to get the water substation. Again, it's going to cover not just these two, but buildings in the future. We see we do got a blue. We've got, well, we got one there for the footpath. We can see that icon there very clearly, the, the, the two people walking. And again, the water tap for the water pipe. Well, we will get a water pipe in, but not uh, immediately. But even without a water pipe, the substation is used as, as a place to get the uh, water deliveries in. And then rather than a water delivery just going to one building at once, it'll actually be able to supply 
multiple buildings. And the same goes on the reverse side when it comes to the sewage tank. Rather than collecting sewage from one building at a time, you know, it draws it in centrally. So let's place that down as well. Um, I may flip this around again because the, <laughs> the shit flows downhill. And of course we need the, uh, literally speaking, it to flow downhill um, so that the gravity assists us in getting rid of it. Of course the water here at the low point, I'm thinking here is going to be a suitable spot. There we go. All right. I'll take a look at this. We've got trains that are going from here. They're going round the roundabout and then they're going over here. What if we have a train, the same line, that goes from this station to here, back to this station, to here, back to this station and then repeats? And of course, we've already got a line. It's already got two trains on. So let's look at modifying that. So I'm going to resume. I'm going to select the lines here. I'm going to refine by train passengers. And of course, we've only got one rail line, even though we've got two trains on the same line. And if we select that, here we can see what the line does. Station one, station two, and that's it. And then it's going to repeat. So what we're going to do is... As we said before, station one, station two. But then rather than repeating, we're going to go here again, but we're going to call it station three. And then we're going to call this one over here station four. And then that way, it's going to pick up this way, drop off, pick up this way, drop off, and it's going to go back and forth. Not only that, it's going to be able to get students from here and drop them off at the university, as well as the workers and if we put some other attractions here, it's going to get passengers as well. And that should alleviate the problem we've got with a railway station full of students and passengers that are not going anywhere. And so let's get that sorted now. First station, second station. If you click the plus, by the way, make sure you click under make sure you select the station where then you want it to appear after in other words if we select this here and then select plus it's going to add a new station in between these two well, well we don't want it in between these two we want it after station two and so select station two there on the list then select the plus here and then here's going to be station three even though it's also station one and that's because then it's going to go here to station four now if we click to accept, now we can see on the green outline there a much better idea. So station one, we see it's also station three because it's going to go one, two, come back, three, four. Come back and repeat ad nauseum. Okie doke. Now we do need here, we can see we need the trains to cross over here or they're going to start and appear on the wrong side of the track. So before I unpause, I am going to plan this. Yeah, we could reverse the on the track, but, uh, you know, I'm always thinking about the future and the future requires that we enable an expansion. So I'm going to go this way. Now, by the way, I'm paying for this up front. The reason you're not seeing it build instantly is because the game's paused, but we can pause it and plan our buildings. As soon as I unpause, because I've paid for this, in this case, dollars, you'll see it build almost instantaneously. And again, create much like before roundabout and connect these guys up unpause and then the game when you're working with railways and junctions and signals the game can sometimes be prone to crashing it's the one of the rare times it does um so hit here on the cog hit save both before and afterwards and uh you know again it's it's a million times better than it used to be but as we saw in the very first stream it can occasionally still happen and again chain in normal signal out and again if you want to know exactly why to do you know why those signals have to have is basically the right word appear in that order do check out the first stream where we look at the railways but uh another good place to put them both before and after this station and again i like my trains driving on the right hand side of the rails just like the cars are driving on the right in the republic here despite everything here in the UK happening on the left. 
Alright, let's unpause. And with the updated rail network, so let's pick up the pace. If we take a look on the station, we've got workers as well as passengers as well as students there waiting. And so let's just wait for the first train to come through and we'll select it. And here we go. So I'm going to pause it. Now, if we click on this train, here we can see he's been to station one. He's been to two. And we can see by these chevrons, he's moving to station three. Well, we know this is station one and three. But importantly, after three comes four, which is here. Now, we can force him to go to a different one. We simply select the station and then we click on the... Uh, go to arrow here that's in green so for instance if i wanted to him to go straight to station four i'd click here and i'd basically force him to go there of course i've got nothing to gain by doing that in this case but the option is there and so let's speed now normal time let's follow him in got the dynamic follow camera on now so we see him picking guys up and on he goes. Nice little uh, electric spark effects there. And again, I, I do much prefer my electric railways because, you know, with diesel, it, I mean, it has its advantages, does diesel, but... If your train runs out of diesel in the middle of nowhere, it, it can cause your entire network to back up. In any case, let's select this train and look, he's carrying 59 workers zero passengers 23 students why is he not got passengers well it's because there's nothing actually here for passengers to visit there's a heating plant which is a workers thing there's a university which is a workers thing and obviously it's a student thing as well now we can see look we got staff with the train having pulled up we've got no professors yet but uh, here we got some more staff moving in We've also got a load of students there, but notice they're not studying. They're waiting for professors. Uh, so let's hope at least some of these guys are professors. And at least not yet. Now, let's just assume that for whatever reason, you'd, a load of people had died and you're running out of experts in this case. You know, we've got a few doctors, but not enough is there a way around this? Well, yes. But it's an expensive way of doing it, but there is a way around. So what we're going to do is we're going to select residential areas. We're going to come to the posh buildings because, you know, posh people, they like their posh buildings. And this is about as posh as it gets. If you look there on the lower left, quality of flats, 96%. If you look at the others, here we got 77. Here we got 94, which is also very high. This one, 89 87 89 but yeah this one is the highest one i've found at uh there about 96 percent so we're going to select that i'm going to pay for it here but here where it says get citizens i'm going to uncheck that just going to pay for it again outright with dollars just you know, to make it quick I'm going to drop it down in such a way that it's in range of the water the sewage and the heating as well as the uh, power station. And we can see that's the case because we basically got one of each of these colours. I think I'm going to plonk it down there. And then I'm going to just manually put a little bit of road here as well. I don't know, something like that. Just to make sure that the road pieces is connected. Now granted, this guy, based on the footpath, has got to go all the way up here. And all the way around there, let's see if there is a footpath entrance. Well, this is perfect here. So rather than going all the way around there, we've got a footpath to the university here. And that's going to enable them at least to have a little bit of a shortcut. And, if, and rather than going all the way around there and then doubling back, if we do that, now it's going to save them a few meters as well. And of course, the best way to check is once it's done, select the building and check here that we're in range and there you see it actually with the university selected if we hold on the path and look at the building that's under construction that's just complete we see now 291 meters and it's actually making use of all those little footpaths that we just created we could also run a path straight over the railway line but you know i was just trying to show the point now nobody here but what we can do 
we've got some options here. We can invite immigrants. Now we can invite 10 from the third world. And we can see that's actually priced in dollars. We can invite 10 immigrants from the Soviet bloc. That's 4,600. But this option, the five immigrant experts from the Soviet bloc. And look, it actually costs more to have five experts than it does just 10 regular immigrants from the Soviet and so I'm just going to click five here and I'm going to click it like two or three times. And so we can see we've got 15 now. Again, that costs a lot of money. So this is not a long term solution, but it does allow you to get over these very short term issues. Now, with these guys selected, bearing in mind, some of them may want to go to the station. Some of them are going to want to do other things, but all of them are going to complain that there's no shops or whatever in the area. And so let's deal with that real quick. So. Uh, residential, again, the, uh, where are we here? The, the small shopping center, again, it covers food, it covers meat, it covers electronics and clothes, which is everything. If you get these smaller ones, you need to build two smaller ones. And by the time you've done it, connected it up, you may as well just build one of these. Let's place that there. I'm going to extend this uh, road, you know, for planning purposes that way. And let's have a look now on our university. And look now, we've got a couple of these guys that we imported working there as university professors. And now that will mean, even though it doesn't look like the trains are moving in just yet, when they do come, at least we've got, well, four or five professors ready to teach them, whereas before we had none. Another issue, we take a look at this, we've got passengers and students waiting at the at the bus station here, although at least not very many. Um, now, the last thing we want to do is steal workers from this bus station. Why? Because remember, the bus station is in, uh, feeding workers to these very important places here for the power and here for the construction stuff. And so to get around that, we're going to place a bus stop and we're going to ask it, do not take workers, just take passengers or students. I'm going to place a platform over nearby uh, the university. Uh, let's place it here. And again, my plan is to extend this road like that. And there's the road network connecting the bus station. Now, I want to name this place. We see there is a name over here, but, you know, A, it's a bit far, and B, I don't, you know, I don't want to know like that. So I'm going to click on the click on the terrain tool so we get this little label option here. I'm going to plant it down just relatively close to the railway station. I don't know exactly. Let's just say there. See the default name looks like uh, Cor Corsana or something equivalent. I'm going to select it, click on the rename tab, and I'm just going to call it the uh, Games W. Uh, brain. Now you can't have them uh, as a very long town, but uh, games W brain, games with brains, we can certainly call it that. And I'm going to click save, and there we go. We've got our new town now, games with brains, and it will label things accordingly. So if we take a look at the train station, it's uh, games with brains train station, uh, games with brains medical university. Now that doesn't stop you renaming these items again and calling it something different. But certainly when you're building more and more towns, and certainly if you're like me, you're not Russian speaking, um, it can be helpful to uh, rename these to a more friendly sounding name, um, even if it's, uh, you know, even if it's just a boringly easy name like London and so forth. All right. And let's carry on then and speed up the time and see if we can see. Here we go. We've got our first train after the professor, so we've got workers, no passengers again, because why? Well, there's nothing to come for, but we've got students. And there we can see everybody unloaded. Now look at this, We this train has picked up a passenger. Why? Well, remember we had a few people in there, 15 I think. There's nothing here for them. Yes, they've got a place to work, but that's basically it. And so this passenger is wanting to visit this town. Why? Well, they've, there's a restaurant. They've got a store there. They've got a tennis ground. Um, they've got a pub. You know, so there's reasons. And even if all towns have got everything, people still want to travel. You know, you've been to places that have got shops. And I'm sure where you live have got shops. You know, that's not a reason not to visit other places. Well, it's the same uh, goes down here.
Now if we click on the university. Now let's pick up the pace. We've got 19 staff, we've got 5 professors, we see now we've got 13 students basically in class and granted another 24 sat around waiting for professors. Well, why don't we have more professors? Well, the great thing is, once some of these students pass the exam, if you like, at the end, some of them will become professors, some of them may go and work in the hospital, and, you know, and that's how the game evolves. And so we've done that. Last thing I wanted to do on this as we said was a look at importing some crops now thankfully we've already got our rail distribution office here from the previous save and his job at least just for now was to import steel prefab or bricks and drop them off here and again those were used uh, by our construction office well to import corn is in the exact same process but rather than importing corn and leaving it there, which clearly it won't go. We need to import corn and drop it into a suitable place. And I'm thinking, aside from having a medical university here, we'll also have our vodka factory here. Um, so we'll come over to the food and alcohol menu here. We've got the distillery. And again, we're going to plan this, and we're going to plan the entire thing before we build it. Now, what I'm really paying attention to is where these two yellow brick roads are because one of them is going to feed into where the crops come from and the other one is going to feed out to where the vodka goes to or where the alcohol goes to and clearly we've got a road and a footpath at the other side as well and so something like this might be a good spot so let's see if it'll work and again i'm on the this menu here just to see if it'll fit clearly Physically is not going to be a problem in terms of space, but in terms of hills and so forth, I want to make sure. So there's the distillery. Coming over to the crop menu again. Uh, sorry, the food menu. We need a storage for the crop. So here we go, the grain storage. So not the farm, but the grain storage. Because again, yes, we could farm our own crops. But for speed, let's again import for now. So here we see the yellow brick road. And so again, making sure it connects. Now, how do you know, or how do I know, that alcohol requires crops? Well, if because I've played before, but if you hover the mouse over the distillery, you can see what it needs there. Well, up to 100 workers, it's going to produce up to 6 tonnes of alcohol a day. But in return, it's going to require up to 30 tonnes of crops, 10 megawatts of power, and 13 cubic metres of water. And so... You know, that's, that's that one sorted. Now, how do we get water there? Well, like before, but it's quite a ways for lorries to come all that way. And so I think it's going to be much easier if we come over here. Ah, where are we? Here we go, the water switch. I'm going to pu actually pump the water all the way over from our existing water supply all the way over here. And then because it's coming all the way over here to the distillery, we may as well split some off to uh, the rest of the town. Uh, so let's start uh, again. I'm just on the planning phase, even though I am using the road. And I'm going to bring round to there and to here. And I'm going to click here again, not to start building, but to accept it as a plan. Yeah, if I wanted to build it, I'd have to change it to the rubles. Mind you, my guys, my construction guys will start trying to build, but it's going to take so long that if there is a problem and I have to cancel some of it or all of it, it's not going to have wasted any money. All right, so the water, let's first of all see, is this in range of the water distillery? Well, that's the power. Where's the water distillery? Uh, the, sorry, the water. Well... Just 293. Look, it doesn't reach the storage, but that doesn't matter. It's this building that requires. Okay. Let's get the water switch. And the reason is because, again, like a plug, this divides one into many. I'm going to place it there. Come down. F3 to come down. I'm going to select my water pipes. And for my existing water pipes here, we've got the pump. I'm going to use my Q and E keys to get around that little problem there. 
water is pumped in again i'm using my mouse wheel tell you what actually i'm just going to go to there and then go like that and then i'm going to change to a middle pipe because there's no need for a big one and i'm going to connect this water substation up and we've already verified that that is just in range of the distillery now i'm going to build all of that using rubles because uh, it's going to take my guys a long time to dig that up but i'll tell you what i'll let them put the footpath and that little water switch in themselves let's resume at slow speed how do we get crops in there? Well, we know we're going to use rail. So here's train. And if we take a look, rather than build another railway station for citizens, we're going to use a cargo stop. Now, what do we get with cargo? Well, the same yellow brick road. And why do we need the yellow brick road? Well, hopefully you can start and see, because that's how cargo moves between the different buildings. And so we know we've got a road on the front which we need, if nothing else, in case the train station sets on fire. We've got the yellow brick road that connects to the corn. And that's what we're going to be importing, at least using this station. So I'm just clicking to level the terrain and hopefully that will fit. And it does. Let's click. I'm going to quickly save just in case there's a problem because I'm going to start mingling with rail. And here we see we got this roundabout and I'm going to try and make a nice use of it. Now again, trains driving on the right. And let's see here if we curl this out. And look at that. Fantastic. Now I could spend a lot of effort in trying to loop this back round, But the easiest way is just to let the train turn round. Well, if it turns round. It can't exit the roundabout this way because then it's going against traffic. It needs to exit the other way. And so I'm going to split the uh, rail like that. And then when it come, when it turns around, it can come that, that way and exit that way. Now that to me is a perfect plan. You can get your own guys to build rail, but it requires a, a different construction office. We'll look at that also in a future video. But for now, let's just pay for it. And again, using the signals, we want the normal signal leading out. And because we drive on the right, that's there. And we want the chain when it comes to a roundabout leading in. And again, that's just to assist with traffic. Check out the first video for more info on that. Now over here, same thing again, but just to make sure, you know, that this is working. So I want the normal one that way and then that way. And that's going to keep this flowing. So the train comes here, it drops off the corn, it loads into the building as required. The building puts it into the distillery as required. And when the distillery has worked with its corn, it's worked with its water, it's got all its people there, it produces the alcohol. Where does the alcohol go? Into a warehouse. How can you verify that? Well, hover the mouse over the uh, warehouse and there you can see capable of holding 325 tons of alcohol well what if you think this one might hold alcohol well hover the mouse no it's just bricks boards and steel what about this one well that's for vehicles what about this one that's for grain that's for meat and so you know if you're ever unsure just hover your mouse now don't forget once we've got the storage we need an easy way to get it out but for now there we go. I'm just going to build that instantaneously because I'm fairly confident now this is going to work. Although I am going to plan the road. And going to just okay that and let my guys build it when they come. Now we're getting more and more trains and people here into university. Um, more professors, we've got more students than ever in the auditorium. Yes, we've still got a few guys waiting. Now, there's probably going to be problems with this guy. And let's go from the top. Now, they're unable to get food. Why? Well, look at this. There's no food, no clothes, no electronics, no meat. Why? Because we haven't set it to automatically import. So how do we do that? So I'm going to, again, you've got a choice. Dollars or rubles. I like to do everything with rubles unless there's a good reason not to. Because rubles is... We're near the Russian border. Rubles is the only thing that we can export to gain more. If we want to sell stuff to the American border, we need to get to the other side of the map. We've not even got a road over there. Never mind 
enough goods really to sell. So I'm going to buy using rubles. Now again, we could get deliveries in from the border and do it ourselves, but it's just much easier and quicker to do it this way. I'm going to hit auto purchase. I'm going to select food once. I'm going to select clothes, electronics and meat once. I'm going to click to buy. Now, as soon as I hit this, watch our bank balance tip out and pay. And I'm going to select uh, pause. And you see that money tip away and it stopped now. And that's because it's bought those goods there. So that should start and resolve the problems. By the way, the problems are not instantly resolved. It will disappear over the coming days and weeks. It's not like, oh, there's your food and instantly everybody's happy with the food situation. It takes time. What's next? Unable to participate in sport. Well, let's give them a football playground then. Number one and number two, let's give them an indoor pool. And I'm going to place that relatively close to the heating plant because, of course part and parcel of the pool is that it's heated i'm going to put that um there now why didn't i line it up with the road here because one of the things that we've not yet done and again we'll discuss this in more detail in the future one is we've not put any um soviet emblems in and these are more or less required to get people to behave properly the more statues basically the more propagandized and nationalized people are the more likely they are to well like it says there be loyal to the government the more likely they are basically to be good little citizens for your republic versus little rebels um so let's put a red star which is by the way by far the best of the four if you look at the stats uh, that it gives uh, this one 5.2 percent boost for up to 415 meters versus say um the little Lenin here that is 2.4% for just 70 meters. I don't know if you can stack these. So like if you put four next to each other, will it boost it by 20%? I don't know. But for now, let's put one down there. And again, well, we'll let our guys uh, build that. And so if we select, clearly there's two parts to this, right? So we've got the statue, but we've also got the footpath that connects it to the road. It can't build the statue until the footpath has been built. I can see no construction offices have yet have been signed. Why? Well, because they're busy doing other things. And one of the things is building the existing sewage pipes that actually we, we asked them to start doing yesterday. Uh, sorry, not yesterday, but uh, the second episode. Of course, digging sewage pipes over long distances underground is uh, quite hard work. Um, for your people to do versus say just a few power lines above ground which we've seen how quick that can be all right really should go through these notifications but once again notification that this guy stopped work why well lack of workers probably we've got new vehicles um what's this global market report price of iron on the global markets is going down fine heating problem delete electricity problem delete by the way, do you remember when we set that little heater up to here that's going to supply the fire engine? We asked our guys to build it. Perfect example of notify me when finished, because who knows when our construction units are going to finish that. Well, if we notify, then we will know. Stop production again, that's there. If you find yourself bothered too much by certain types of notifications, um, you can come into the settings and general here we go notification and you can uncheck the ones that you're uh, you don't want to be bothered with if you for, for, for example finding a certain type is uh, appearing too often again i'd be careful with that because there's certain notifications such as uh, train jams or traffic that may be game stopping type notifications that one time in 10 you don't deal with it a heating problem again it's this fire station we don't need that's the same again new trains new train wagons heating problems missing resources electronics well that's long since been sorted and so let's delete that electricity problem let's delete that more electricity problems over here well he's sorted so let's delete and in fact what we got left three left and it's electricity production and heat so i'm just going to delete all of those to save time okay 
So the corn gets brought in. It's stored in the grain. Let's uh, let's just build these again to save time. So there's the corn. There's the grain storage. Rather, there's the distillery. We've of course got a little yellow brick road connections, and then that gets brought into the warehouse. And again, that's going to be alcohol. So I'm going to limit. You don't have to, but uh, just to prove a point, and it's going to be alcohol all the way along. If you only connect alcohol to the building, that's going to be the only thing that goes there anyway. Then what I'm going to do is have a, same as before, road cargo station coming out from here. I'm just looking to... There we go, that'll work nicely. And that's where my lorries are going to pull into to load up the booze. But I'm also, if we look real carefully, there is a rail line down the side of this warehouse and that allows us to put one train in and that one train can be used to load stuff up. Now, I could connect through this station and I'm just thinking that I think is the best way to do it. The problem is if there's a train that wants to go here and there's already one in the station, that's going to cause problem. And so to deal with that, I'm going to create a parallel track like this. That requires me... I'm just going to OK that. I'm going to save just in case there is a problem here. Thankfully there hasn't been. I'm going to delete this little bit of rail here. I'm going to create a parallel track there. OK all of that with the rubles. And then again, we still want the crossover from here. And so as before, we'll have the track that crosses like that and back. And then once it's done, it can exit this way. Now, because trains are going to be allowed through here, I only want trains to be allowed through if there is room for them to go through. And clearly... Whenever there's a dead end situation with multiple tracks and you've got junctions, there's a problem. There's a potential problem that things can get stuck and clogged up and in the way. And so to prevent that, again, the I'm going to put the chain and that's only going to let a train through if there's room on the other side. And that's going to be uh, identified by uh, having the signals here. So if a train comes through here, clearly this is going to be red. It's going to leave this signal green. But if a train comes through here and here, both of these are going to be red. And if both of these are red, again, this, the chain signal, therefore, even though it could let a train through to here or to here, clearly it couldn't go further if these are red. But because both of these are red, the train signal knows, right, I'm not even going to let anybody through onto the junction. And then that way it keeps the junction open so that when these guys are ready to go, they can pull out with a free junction rather than a train that's pulled Blocking the junction, trying to get through into a place that it just can't get into. Again, for, for, for a little more detail on that, either rewind and hear it again, or, or better still, watch uh, the first episode where, where we look into it. Now, I am wanting a signal here, but... Oh, would it fit? Oh, it's going to be... Mm, not really. Um, okay, no problem. There, that'll work. Let's unpause. Let's unpause. Let's unpause. By the way, this is a contiguous piece of rail. Sometimes there's a little bit of dirt that's like on a hill that just makes it appear like there's a gap. You know it's contiguous because you can see that it's like solitary selection rather than two separate bits in any case. Now we've got the uh, rail there that uh, hopefully will feed that. Uh, so to get workers to here, let's just help this road thing along. We see our guys are already building here. Now, just because our guys are building, that doesn't mean we can't basically pay and pull the job out from under them and get it to uh, complete much quicker. Is this guy powered well there's your answer yes what about this guy yes what about the rail station yes okay 
So almost everything, we just need workers and crops. So this is going to be the end of the video once we've got this connected. So I'm going to get uh, some of these buildings here. And again, some of these guys are going to go working in the uni. Some are going to be students. Uh, you know, that's all fine. I'm just thinking it's going to be uh, more efficient. And I am going to get student uh, citizens for this because, of course... I'm not trying to import uh, university types for this. One, two. Let's get a road built. One, two. We'll curve that round nicely. Unpause. Select the footpath. Make sure all of these guys are connected up to the road. Take thus. And of course, these guys have got a fair ways to go to get to that shot. In fact, they're completely out of range, I think. So it may even be worth um, giving these ones a second store over here. Hang on, not small store. Sorry, small shopping center. There. Now, we do have the auto purchase goods option for the shopping center, which basically does away with the need to do with what we did with that one. Um, but because I didn't press it, we're going to have to do the same again. Now, these people, again, they've got all the way around the houses. Let's build them a bridge. I don't think we discussed that. So we click on the pedestrians here. Here we've got bridge, or here we've got even underpass. But let's go with the bridge. I'm going to click the steel. And before I click down, we can see we've got uh, a one end that climbs up and splits into three. Well, the one end is always on the floor. Um, so one of the ends I need down here. Now this is the store. This is the swimming pool. So these guys may want to come over to either or. I'm going to place one there. I'm going to spin this around, move away. You can see it's suggesting uh, where the bridge should be built. And whenever it connects, that there looks perfect. So I'm going to place that down. I'm going to build the footpath. The reason I'm building this right away is because these people need to eat. And if they don't eat, bad things are going to happen. So let's connect it up with the uh, pool. Let's connect the pool there with the store. Uh, this here with the road and with the back of this place here. Now as I unpause, because I've paid for this, it should build almost instantly. And now we can start seeing the first guys coming in over the bridge. Some may be going there to work. Others are going to be going... Um, to buy now we see there's no food clothes again because we didn't auto purchase so let's just quickly deal with that food clothes electronics meat and gradually once we start producing our own food and things later on of course we'll not auto purchase we'll build it ourselves but again for now to get going you see we've used so far six and a half out of the 10 million just three and a bit left now with these guys all set here 100 out of 100 working in the distillery but with all the workers in the world and no crops they're not going to produce anything even though they have got water and power and again we said we were going to use the rail network to bring them in here so let's select this guy now we need a certain type of cargo wagon to bring in goods so let's hover the mouse until we find well there we see that one there carries up to 53 the box car and that seems to be the only one suitable so I'm going to buy... Mm, let's buy five for now. Unpause. Clearly it's not doing anything. Why? Well, we've not told it. Even though we've given it the wagon, there is a train there. That, that locomotive, by the way, will serve any purpose. And if we're short, we can always buy a second. Of course, they're expensive. Well, we need to tell it so far it's going to the border and it's got one stop and that stop is to drop here well we need to add it a new stop i'm going to click the plus we don't need to add the border again that's already in the custom house but we do need to add this one click what's your job here well we don't want to load anything from there there's nothing here to load you to unload and you to unload crops there we go up to how many well i'm going to say if there's any less than 70 percent then unload and again because this is going to be continuously using crops to produce alcohol now it's only set to load steel prefabs and bricks from the custom house but we need crops as well so make sure we check that now if we unpause 
there we see it's now given the order we see it's not the open ones that's the steel it's these box cars that we've just bought five of them if we select the train we actually see here it's going to the custom house to load 100% of crops and then it's going to go to the games with brains cargo train station to unload 100% crops in other words here once they unload they're going to appear in here up to 800 tons once that's done these guys can start getting to work once they're working uh, alcohol is going to start appearing here now what we can also do is be really clever because we see here this building is connected to the rail, rail network and once again selecting this building I'm going to assign a new building I'm just going to pause it while I do this and that's going to so we'll click this blue one here and here's the new building the uh, warehouse that's got that singular track on time we're going to scroll down so we can see it. it's down here and we're going to load well what we're going to load alcohol well zero that basically means if there's even a single bottle of booze in there send a train well what i'm going to say is if it's 60 percent, so if it's over half full in other words we're producing an excess of booze because anything less we'll use for ourselves but if it's over half full 60 percent then send a train out to go and load and what are we going to do once it's loaded well we're going to go and unload it where are we going to unload it well the only place we can do to make money which is going to be the border so if we come over here once again to the custom house we see we've checked load well now we're going to check unload and we're going to check the alcohol books here because that's the only resource at all that we're intending on uh, exporting alcohol but again it can't do anything until it's loaded the train with alcohol and it can't load the train until the warehouse here is at least 60 percent full any less the distribution office just won't send a train and again it's going to send this one train and it's doing all three jobs now if we find that things are piling up and the train's getting behind schedule We'll have to buy another locomotive and or more train wagons so it can keep up with, uh, in this case, the four different... Uh, Wait, well, it's got three different uh, uh, tasks to do in addition to visiting the uh, distribution office there. Okay, so let's unpause. In fact, let's pick up the pace because this is going to be the end of it. We see we've got a Concorde there. Let's uh, keep an eye on the train so we can see exactly how this unfolds. So we see it's buying the crops and to fill all five of the wagons we can see is roughly around 4,700 call it uh, rubles by the way double click the icon here to basically get the driver's view Now we can go full speed but it's a bit sickening from the driver's view but oh and and to press the g button as well to hide all the interface to you know marvel at our creation i'm just going to press escape to uh, get rid of that get to this view and we'll just speed time up from there so we see why did the train stop there well because that train was briefly on the uh, roundabout and the way those chain signals work is it doesn't let more than one train on a roundabout at a time. Now, of course, you can come up with other little sneaky ways to improve that. For example, build a railway line from there to there that goes off the edge of the roundabout and all sorts of tricks. And anyway, let's go to normal speed. We see this guy here pulling in. Of course, he's to go here. He's now there. Now we can see the crops unloading. We see this here filling up. We see the distillery boot up and starting to produce smoke. Why? Well, there's workers, there's crops appearing, and because of that, the alcohol that the workers are producing is starting to appear in the warehouse here. Currently one and a half tons out of 325, so we pick up the pace. And alas, that's beginning to fill up. Now, clearly, there's a little ways to go until we get to 60% full. We see it's just met 1%. But now that the train's gone, it's uh, going back to do some more. Notice here, the workers are still in there. 
that crops that are in this storage are clearly dwindling down because again it's using the crops to distill and produce the alcohol and again if we increase the pace the only way that that is going to be refilled again is the distribution office sends the train out again and there we see it the train sent out to get another load of 100% full of crops and why well if we take a look at the order here it says if the cargo station is less than 70% full well clearly it's less than 70% it's only 28% full then send a train and so that's exactly what's been done and it's only going to pick the booze up once it's above 60 we see it's at two and at three that's going to be it for today next time we play this we'll watch the first train exporting the first amount of booze as well as continuing some with other, some other new stuff on the game that we've yet to explore so until then take care hope you're all doing okay that's going to be it from me bye bye